know, one of the things, you know, during this Thanksgiving week and is being thankful for some of the things that we have, and, uh, and Derek talked about that in the writing message. You know, there's a lot of people I'm very thankful for. I talked about Louise, but I'm very thankful for Pam and her dedication of playing and Louise for what they do. There's a lot of work that these mm-hmm. ladies have been doing for many years, so just want to appreciate you for what you do. And Louise and Louise. And we're going to continue praising our Lord and Savior this evening for tonight's inspiration. I want to welcome those online as well that are watching. And uh, we're going to sing from the Blue Book this evening. And we're going to start with page 450. 450, isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? you have a good time together in fellowship and in love pray that you'll bless our time together and bless our evening help us to carry the spirit of your wonderful love out into the world with us always keep us safe we pray in jesus name amen amen thank you at this time david do you mind uh, serving norma for our home supper too. this evening and, and franklin, franklin thank you and franklin I forgot he was there. I was missing the beaver hat. I've been seeing all that. <laughs> oh, it's on the ground there. But yeah, you know he's got it. Especially after that win yesterday. Hey, <laughs> All right. While he's passing around, let's see 449. 449. To God be the glory. <laughs> To God be the glory, great things he hath done, so loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who healed his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life. 
Praises from today or anything that anybody like to share. I know I'd like to update on Dick. How's Dick doing? Good. He's not a whiner. <laughs> yeah. But he's got yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, blistering on his hand. He's Thankful that he's doing much better. We need to continue to pray for Dick. Yeah. Any other Barbara? Uh, praise for my granddaughter, Sarah. Yeah. Uh, she missed us, so uh, we're going to join Fabrics. Join Fabrics, yeah. Yeah, she got promoted. All right. Uh, and then the one who broke out. Her granddaughter, Sarah, who I've known forever, she used to go to church here. Uh, she got a promotion. She was working at Joan Fabrics here in town, but she just moved up and is going to be the head manager over there in Pro House. So. Wow. Wow. That's yeah. great to know. Congratulations. Yeah. All right. Any prayer requests that wasn't said anything from today that we need to add? All right. So, put my name on there too. You got it, Gordon. You're first. How about that? <laughs> there you go. We'll make it easy. <laughs> so, we'll have Gordon, and then uh, Lola has something to say and a special thing to do tonight. So, Gordon, then Lola. This is a song we've been <laughs> here before that the Titanic was the singing and the dance band part of the Titanic. That one was good. Thank you. There we go. Yeah. 
on. I'll turn it on. Dearer my God to thee, dearer to thee, seems always be a cross that raises me. Dearer my God to thee, dearer to thee, seems always be a cross that Raises me. <coughs> Still, my song shall be nearer, my God, to thee. Though, like a wanderer, the sun gone down, darkness be over me, my rest is stone. Yet, in thy dreams of me, Near my God to thee, nearer to thee, nearer to thee. Or oh, if on joyful wing cleaving the sky, sun, moon, and stars forgot, upward I fly. Still all my song shall be nearer my God to thee. Nearer to thee, nearer to thee. Praise God. Praise God. I decided to talk about my mom. My mom raised four of us girls. She always said she grew up with us, <laughs> and then she we grew old with her. As most of you know, she was 101 when she died last month. She taught us well. We had good manners. And my mom wasn't a Christian until much later in life. But she had a part in my sisters and I becoming Christians. She decided when we were teenagers that she was going to learn to play the piano. She played piano by ear, but she wanted to be able to read notes, to read the music. So she made an arrangement with one of our neighbors to teach her to play piano, and in return, it was four girls, teenagers, that would babysit for her. Well, Mrs. Leathers invited my sisters and I to go to church with her. She attended the, the Sixth and Gibbs Church of Christ there in Cottage Grove. And we started going to church regularly. And we were baptized into Christ. And All four of us are pretty faithful today. My mother became a Christian at 90 years of age. But she was, she was a good Christian. She prayed for all the kids, all those girls. She prayed for all of our kids and, and grandkids. So she prayed for everybody. <laughs> I wasn't able to go to my daughter-in-law's funeral. She died about four years ago. And mother was there. And she just, she happened to be sitting next to my grandson, Jason, after the funeral when they had a get together food. And he was 
just kind of down. She said, Jason, do you need a hug? She gave him a hug and he, he said, he started crying. He says, my mom died. And she, and she comforted him. And I heard later that he, that was the first time he cried after Becky had died. He was, I think he was in his 20s, but he was, he was more childlike. You know, he's a special needs person. But I, th I think God used my mom that day. So anyway, God can use us no matter what our age. Next one we'll see. Let's see here. How about 401? 401. Where he leads, I'll follow. And then after that, we will have um, Sam and then David. <laughs> I'm not going to try to sing tonight, I'm just going to tell you a story. And it's a story my dad told a number of times, and uh, I told it down to church at Bandon a few times. Uh, there's about six people 
that come regularly. Uh, one lady sometimes travels, so she's not there all the time, and there's a couple that sometimes have to be out of town. So when one or two people are missing, we just, we just do our regular service. But when three people are gone, and we're down to half our people, which is three, um, we do a short service. We sing, we pray, we have communion. I save my sermon for the next Sunday. And I, I told this story a couple times. Um, the story's from way back when there was circuit riders. One preacher, they had to do a number of churches. So a young man went to Bible college because he wanted to be a preacher. And when he graduated, they assigned him three churches. He was told he was going to preach the morning service at a big city. And then he would ride the train to a smaller city and he would do an afternoon service. And then he'd get a horse from the livery stable and ride up in the mountains to a little farming town and do an evening service up there. So to get prepared, he, he practiced up half a dozen songs. Uh, he wrote out his prayers so he'd say them right. And he wrote a sermon, had it all prepared. And that first Sunday, he preached at the big city and people met in the door and thanked him for you know, the service and said how good it was and everything. He got on the train, he went to the medium-sized city, to a smaller church, and he did the afternoon service there, and they invited him to have lunch, and they told him again how good he did. And then he went to the livery stable, and he got a horse, and he got on the trail, and he rode up to the little town in the mountains, and they didn't have their own church building. They met in the school building. So he went there, he got there a few minutes early, and it was locked. And nobody was there. And he says, I think they know I'm coming, but he waited. And pretty soon a little old man came and unlocked the door and says, I'm probably the only one going to come tonight. This is a farming town. We're right in the middle of harvest. Everybody else is pretty busy. They'll be here other Sundays, but they have to get the crops in. And so the preacher says, okay, come in. And he waited a few more minutes just to make sure nobody was going to come late. Nobody did. So he started in. He led his six songs he did some prayers he did a sermon that he had all practiced up and he got done he went to the door and the little old man came out and he says well you know how do i do for my first thing and the old retired farmer said you know i'll tell you this way when i was farming if i took a whole load of hay out to the field to feed the cows and only one cow showed up to eat i would feed it but i wouldn't give it the whole load <laughs> it seems to be a night for readings, I guess. All of us want to read instead of singing. Um, as I've been mentioning to a few of you, we've gone through our storage lately. And of course, you know, my shirt came from the storage, and the suspenders came from the storage, and the pants came out of our storage. We had put a lot of stuff in storage. Also, what we put in storage was a few of these little things that different people have written and I've gathered over the years. And I pulled out a couple that I'd like to read for you here this evening. Uh, one a little more serious, one a little more funny. And so my wife says, we'll always leave them laughing, so do the funny one last. So I thought I'd start with the one a little more serious here. So it's um, just a short little reading, something I had seen on my sister's refrigerator. And I liked it so much, so I said, oh, hey, can you make me a copy of that? And she took it off and handed it to me. And I thought it was really important. And it reads like this. I walk down the street. There's a deep hole on the sidewalk. I fall in. I'm lost and helpless. It isn't my fault. It takes forever to find my way out. I walk down the same street later. There's a deep hole still in the sidewalk. I pretend I don't see it and fall into it again. <laughs> Can't believe I'm in the same place. But it isn't my fault. It still takes me a long time to get out of the hole. And then I walk down that same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see it's there. I still fall in. It's a habit. My eyes are open. I know where I'm going. It is my fault. I get out immediately. I walk down the street. 
There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I walked down, I walked around it and walked down another street. <laughs> There's always holes. Gotta watch out for that. Now for a little bit on the lighter side. This, uh, wow, this is an old one. Um, see, the date on this is, uh, there we go, 1964 for King Features. Um, starts out, uh, Dear Helen, this is one of those Abbey type of things where you call in and get advice. Uh, but this one's a little different. Dear Helen, this was out of the uh, Fresno newspaper. Thanks for printing a prayer for those who grow older. I read across this prayer some years ago and it impressed me so much that I summarized it in a little poem that I've enclosed and I wrote thoughts on life at age 82. The first thing you can't see quite as old age 82, but, or at 57. Well, another year is ending and I'll soon be 62. I have some thoughts on getting older that I'd like to pass on to you. There's an old quotation that people often say, it's not the years you live, live, but it's how you feel today. But this has double meaning depending on the breaks. It's great if you feel chipper, it's not so if you're full of eggs. An old prayer asked, if I have pains that these won't hurt but have the grace to listen to the ones whose aches are worse. The same old prayer reads, I ask, O Lord, as older I grow, help me keep friends that I have now, that I love and know. But this is quite impossible if one lives on and on, for nature takes its toll each year, and one by one they're gone. The saying that I like the most is one we all should heed. It sums up how so terribly sensible and how this is how it reads. Do not complain of getting old, a privilege granted you. It is denied to many and given to just a few. We are captive audience to the druggists and MDs. They keep us alive and kicking and on their doctor's fees. Our Medicare gives us a break and fortunes and fortunate we are. In mail on the third of every month, we get our Social Security. Okay. You see, my thoughts on getting old go round and round and round, but I can't do much about it, and this seems quite profound. Try to extract from this old world the things that you find fun, and pray that you go quietly, alas, when life is done. Amen. <laughs> Sam and thank you, David. You know, I was thinking about it. Norma, do you have a reading tonight? Yes, I do. If you want to read it. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Little Johnny dies and goes to heaven. St. Peter meets him at the gate and tells him, we are a little full right now, so I will have to ask you three questions. Okay, Johnny said. How many days in a week start with T? Easy. Today, tomorrow, etc. Well, that is not what I ask. Here is number two. How many seconds are in a year? Easy too. January 2nd, February 2nd, March 2nd, etc. I'm not sure you still understand the question, Johnny. Number three. What is God's name? Easy. It's Howard. Our Father who art in heaven... Howard, be thy name. <laughs> okay, okay, come in, says Peter. <laughs> Thank you. 
Barbara, do you have anything tonight? Okay. All right. Up next, we will see page 32. Page 32. And then after that, we will have Franklin, and then Derek and I. Page 32. Are you reading tonight? Okay, never mind. We'll have... Uh, Derek and I, and uh, then we'll sing a few other songs. Oh, Steve, you got a song? Okay, we'll have Derek and I, and then Steve after this song. Page 32 in the blue book. She loved to be on stage, and I love all the memories of mom was trying to turn the pages for her because she always got lost. So, I mean, those are really precious memories. And Myrna, she was up there still, 
And there's a lot of precious ones that are not here today. But you know what? One day we'll scroll over to heavens to see them. sing, but uh, I can stand up and I feel okay, so I wanted to share this song because it's been on my mind. <clears throat>
Have a great evening and a great week.